What's up YouTube, Jason here with Jason Bites Back, episode numero quincinta, quincinta, carinci, ah, oh, give up. If you guys are not familiar, this is episode of which I go back through the last month and answer questions and or respond to comments. And as always, these episodes, these episodes are brought to you by my awesome Patreon subscribers of which will be listed $5 plus at the end of this video. By the way, all you $10 peeps might want to check out. I like this this month's June's. It was pretty cool. Kind of like it. A little bit of man trip, like, you know, monster trucking in there. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. But anyways, thank you everyone for watching and thank you to my Patreon subscribers for supporting the fire that is known as my YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's jump right into the questions. This is about my old Loki build, well, old, my new Loki build, $10,000. Uh, Matt says, Marty says, I'm curious how much of that space is actually used. Do you just uh, use full bitrate Blu-ray rips? My Jellyfin server is this, this, and this. No, 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 no. I couldn't imagine 300 terabytes or trying to back that content up. Well, Marty 57, I only use about 44% of my space. And that is between not only my content, but also my backups, my blue iris video, uh, DVR backs up to that. Uh, so it really, I mean, it is not that much. The 300 terabyte mark for me was just more of a milestone that I wanted to hit, meaning I have plenty of room to grow, I can add to it as I wish, and I could say that I had 300 terabytes. That, that was it. That was pretty much it. Next question is from Chad. And this is the, is Plex really the future of streaming? He says, watching movies streamed for Plex is a no-go for me personally. Only streaming services where you have to watch six ads in a row that I know of. Great for hosting your own files, absolutely horrible. Well, Chad, that was pretty negative, albeit 100% true. Welcome to television. I picked this question because I, I've stressed this before. It, it's literally just, television. Yes, it's on demand, but you're watching ads. It's just like YouTube. You watch ads. When you have your own content in your own library or you're paying for something like Hulu or or Disney Plus or Netflix, etc., you're paying up front to avoid those commercials. But if you're watching free TV, like if you turn on your regular TV and you're watching free TV, you have commercials. You got like three minutes of video and like six minutes of commercials and then, you know, four minutes of video, 20 minutes of commercials. I mean, it's the exact same revenue plan for streaming TV, but it's just for your computer or just on demand rather than coming through your regular antenna or something. But my thing isn't the fact that it has ads. My thing, why I'm impressed and why I like the feature existing is because it does bring in more revenue for Plex, I would hope, instead of them just offering a service for it to be there. Hopefully they make some kind of a cut, which in the end helps them develop more other features or improve on features that they already have. By the way, Plex, can we get audiobook support? I don't use it, but everyone keeps asking me about it. But two, I think the biggest thing for me is just really, if you don't have the ability to have your own massive server, maybe you have ran out of space, maybe you can't afford to add more media just because you literally do not have the room to store it. And maybe you wanna watch a movie and it's there. Yeah, you gotta watch ads. You gotta go back to the 1950s and watch commercials every few minutes, but at least you have it. Next question is from Zandrello. This is about the, uh, will force his camera to use PoE? Okay, so he said, Jason, is this still running without a problem? I consider buying at least one of these splitters as I have two indoor Amcrest PTZ cameras. I actually forgot about this video for a while. I had to go back and look up what he was talking about. But what I did is I used one of those PoE splitters, the ones where if you have a PoE switch powering PoE devices and you want to hook up a non-PoE device, and it runs within the voltage range of what your PoE can deliver, then you get those little splitters that takes the ethernet cable and has a little DC thing that comes off the side. This allows you to not only get the network connection, but also take the PoE power and feed it to whatever device you're trying to power. Or in my case, an, an Amcrest PTZ camera that I originally started with in my garage. I did have to find a way to plug it in and using this little adapter did work all up into the point of which when I replaced that camera with one that was power over ethernet. I absolutely never had any problems with it. It was a great solution, but you have to look at what the device actually needs. In the case of that PTZ camera, the way it powered itself was through a USB connection. So you had a little USB wall wart 
So it was the same volt, it was five volt and just low power. I mean, it was very easily ran on PoE. So just make sure that whatever you're jumping into trying to power with PoE is not going to require more power than your PoE switch can handle. Next question is from Utah Trucker about the Unify failed me. I love this video, so much feedback. <laughs> any more updates on any other video about the issue? Okay, so this was regarding my Mi Ross devices. These are smart devices. They have, from my experience so far, a nice little ecosystem. They offer a bunch of different options. They got a lot of different devices that, you know, I personally would like to use in my house. And they work with HomeKit, or at least they have HomeKit available versions. Now, since I have an iPhone, I wanna be able to go and use the HomeKit, use Siri integration, maybe use home automation, all with HomeKit. I know there's better solutions out there, but I just want the ease and convenience of HomeKit. That's just what I, what I want, I know. So over the last six months or so, I have been buying different devices that were smart. Things like uh, iDevices was one of them actually that works fairly decent with HomeKit, but uh, things like you know switches and plugs and things like that, uh, bulbs actually too. And basically I've just been kind of testing how reliable they are and staying connected to the network, being responsive to my commands. You know, how long does it take? you know, to execute my commands when I'm not on the same network. And through all these tests, I found that Miros has actually been one of the more reliable device ecosystems that works with HomeKit, which is why I really wanted to use and switch everything over to Miros in my house, at least everything that I want to be smart. However, I switched everything over to Unify. I mounted one access point. I still have two more that I have yet to figure out exactly where I want to mount those. I have them hooked up and I'm kind of testing. I've moved them a couple times. I'm just running some tests on the back end to see what I want to do with them exactly before I make a final video on that. But those Wi-Fi 6 long range units and the Mi Ross smart devices, for some reason, just don't play well. Every other smart device that I've plugged into this new uh, unified network has worked flawlessly. I haven't had any issues. Even when I was messing with different changes to the settings and, and trying to get the Mi Ross to connect reliably, everything else worked flawlessly. But Mi Ross specifically, and only Mi Ross, had issues staying connected to the Unify network. A lot of people were quick to offer up their very simple solutions like creating a 2.4 gigahertz only network, SSID. Like, like really? Yeah, I get that. I ran through and changed all kinds of different settings and having a 2.4 only network was literally the first and the only thing that I did for all the IoT devices was just 2.4. I finally gave up and hooked up my old TP-Link router temporarily while I wait for some kind of a solution and or I switch ecosystems. Solution, of course, being a firmware upgrade or maybe some kind of a walkthrough that gives me the magic code to get me Ross to work with Unify. I haven't found that code yet and I haven't gotten a firmware upgrade yet that has fixed this. Although when I read this question today and I took a screenshot to talk to you about it tonight, I actually kind of went down a rabbit hole again where I went through, there was an update to my LR6s and I went through and changed a bunch of settings. I even went through the comment section where some people gave me some really thorough, you know, like setting breakdown, what they use for their internet of thing devices. And I tried a bunch of different things and it's been another couple few hours on that going back and forth between my TP-Link and the unified system and still have connected activity issues. One thing I can say though, is that it's really the Miros garage door opener that has the biggest issue. It's not really the plugs or the switches, which those are the two things that I'm kind of testing right now for how reliable they are. And if that's really the thing where it's only the garage door opener and the light bulbs, which I'm really not that excited about color changing light bulbs just cause it doesn't matter. As long as the plugs and the switches work reliably, I might just get a different garage door opener that works with HomeKit. Cause that's that's the center of all this. It's just a garage door opener. I can have a full Miros smart home all set up and ready to go and then just have a different HomeKit enabled garage door opener and be happy with that. So Utah Chucker, even though I have not made a video about that, there is an update. It's still in the works slash pending updates. Next question is from uh, Steven Schunk. This is on the last Jason Bites back episode numero 490. He says, long time viewer channel, uh, a question. Okay, if I have a Plex server at my home and I share my Plex server with my family, 
would there be any advantage or disadvantage to my friends to have their own Plex server in them home? Or would running through the Plex app on a smart device client be just as good? AKA have a Raspberry Pi 4 with Plex server installed so the server or Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV, etc., is on the local network, but they access my shared media from it. Does it offer any better quality, buffering, better performance? I pay for gigabits, symmetrical at my house, and their up and down speeds are good as well. Well, Steven, honestly, when it comes to something like this, if you wanna offer up your Plex media server, unless they want their own Plex media server, as long as they're okay with the potential that your internet might go down, your server might be you know, going through some updates, maybe something on your end would bring the Plex server down, as long as they have good up and down, they can maybe stream direct play all the time and you don't have any reliability issues on your end, there's really no upside to them maintaining their own Plex media server. Again, that's solely if they don't want their own Plex media server. If they wanna collect their own you know, list of video files and they don't wanna to have to harass you and they feel like they don't wanna like ask you to get things or whatever the case may be, then yeah, sure, start their own Plex media server. But as long as your media server can handle it, and if it's a Raspberry Pi, you better hope so. As long as it can handle it, I don't see any real need, you know, for them to manage their own Plex Media server when they can just log into yours. I will say, however, if you are running a Raspberry Pi uh, as your Plex server and you run into any kind of issues with the client not being able to direct play that video file and that Raspberry Pi has to transcode, you might be in for a rough experience. Next question is from Chris Bailey. Every time you pull up that knock, I look over to my Plex server, server TARDIS. I like that, uh, which is the same model. Thanks again for turning me on to those knucks. Yes, this is by Simply Nuck. I gave one of these away. I was super ex uh, excited to be able to give one of these away because this is the extreme version. It's an i7 10th gen processor with the hardware acceleration enabled by the built-in or GPU on the processor and holy bananas, it could do so much transcoding. It's absolutely insane. So I'm really happy you like it. It's definitely a beefy little miniature server, but to follow up to that, Caspar says, I'm curious what, which NUC that is. Is it better than let's say a Synology NAS? Well, not all Synology NASs are built the same, but unless your Synology is running a 10th gen i7 uh, CPU with you know integrated graphics, I really doubt that it can do what this thing can do. Next question is from Lee on the Unify film. He says, have you tried TP-Link Omada? It's similar to Ubiqu Ubiquity Unify. I have not. I had an email briefly with them and I kind of told them that I was basically switching everything over to Unify. Let me get back to you, it, you know, kind of up in the air. I am willing to try it out, but I'm actually really, really happy with Unify. My only real hiccup that I've had so far was the Miros uh, IoT devices. Uh, aside from that, like the topology is pretty good, like the, the security, the blocking different countries, like everything is amazing and it's worked really well and it's absolutely beautiful. And I already have some different videos planned to finish and round out my setup that I'm doing. So I am more than happy with my setup now. I have heard a lot about the Omada system though. So I am actually willing to try that in a corporate environment, specifically at work. Set up a mesh system, have different access points, and just kind of go full send at work. It'd be nice because what I have at work is, is pretty rudimentary. Even though I did take that ingenious Wi-Fi access point up there, I've yet to mount it for various reasons. But uh, yeah, it would be nice to just have one nice full system and everything works together, everything same brand, everything just meshes really well. Next question is from Christopher. This is on the Pecron E1000. Do you think the 1000 watt would run three fans and lights for about six to seven hours each? I have to deal with the hurricane seasons and I'm looking for a quiet alternative to generators for nighttime use. This is a loaded question and I am absolutely and irrationally addicted to these powered battery backup things. Like I can't get enough of them, it's stupid, but they come in handy, especially I did. I had a little camping trip. That's what I pretty much ran it on. I ran lights, I ran fans. I had those fans like kind of surrounding the little, uh, you know, sitting area underneath the shade while it was super hot, like 100 degree plus. But the loaded part of this question is really going to be how big are these fans? How many watts do they draw? What setting are you gonna have them on? Because if they're, if they're pulling like 200 watts, then you're probably not gonna last six to seven hours. You're only probably gonna last two to three hours. If you're only powering like 
I don't know, maybe a 60 watt fan, then yeah, probably gonna get six to seven hours out of it. But when it comes to lights, I would specifically look up things like USB lights. I have USB string lights that take very, very little power to run. We're talking like four to five watts and they will run all week if that's all you're running, just for a few lights. If you're plugging in a standard light bulb, an AC light bulb, you're talking 20 to 30 watts just for that light bulb, it's going to significantly cut down the runtime. And it's gonna get even worse if you're running, you know, higher power or super old light bulbs that are not energy efficient. What I would say though, is if this is like for a hurricane aftermath, where you're gonna be out of power for like a week and you need something to run some, you know, fans or lights or something like that, definitely look at getting some sort of a solar power or solar panel Panel in order to charge it up during the day. That way you can start your night off with a fresh battery. And maybe not only depend on one, maybe have a small generator, something. It's where you could at least keep it topped off or if it's too cloudy, you can charge it during the day, etc. That way you're not completely relying on something like this to get you up and running or to keep you running. And I, and I do say that because like, I would imagine that whenever the power goes down, it's gonna be a while, you might be finding yourself using this to keep your refrigerator slash freezer alive because you don't want your food to go bad and you want something to eat. So you'll kind of give up the fans to have fresh food. And these things can really do that. It's kind of crazy. Next question is going to be from Gary. I think Unify probably failed you because it looks to me like you have no clue what you're doing. To be honest, stick to TP link, LOL. Hey, you know what, Gary? Fair enough. From the outside looking in, I do make an ass on myself when I make these videos. Sometimes, in fact, I go out of my way to show the struggle of trying to figure out something really dumb. And taking all of that and adding on top of not wanting to make videos that are an hour long, I cut out a lot of things that would probably explain a lot of the stuff that I run into. But getting away from the excuses, yes, you're right. I am not a network engineer, network expert, and I have no experience with Unify up until right now when I purchased these Unify units. So even though I have a decent experience with networking, I don't have that experience with Unify, and I do have a lot of learning to go. But my style is hold my beer, let's see if this works, and show the wreck afterwards on video. That's what I do, Gary. I put myself out there for you to judge me. So hopefully you enjoy it. Next question is from Chill My Uni. He said, and have myself what, LOL, a great day. Well, folks, that is the last question of the day. Again, I do appreciate all of you for watching. I definitely appreciate my uh, Patreon subscribers for throwing money at me like a cheap hooker every month. So their name will be listed at the end of this video. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure to leave those in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself. A good day. Okay, this is this is not this is not all of it. So it's been I've been ordering this stuff as I've been going along. So bear with me on this one. Uh, this is a fifty nine fifty that I need to put in here, so I don't step on it or break it or whatever. So Ryzen nine fifty nine fifty. This is going to be my new workstation build. I've had this couple few weeks now. I haven't built it yet. Um, I have this, which I don't even know if this is gonna work, but I bought it just because I was curious. It has a little, you know, active cooler on it. As you can see, there's dust. That's how bad this is. Anyways, this has an active cooler on it. I wanna hook this up. Originally, I was gonna run this Sabrent. This is a two terabyte Sabrent that runs pretty quick. I think it has 5,000, no, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta look up the performance on this, but I've always been a really huge Samsung SSD fan. I've never had one fail on me. So this came up, 980 Pro, two terabyte. I can never have too many two terabytes when it comes to you know storage, you know, like for footage and editing and things like that. I always need more and more space in order to edit and do things off of. So I got this originally with the Sabrent heatsink, and I'm like, cool, that'll be my main OS, and it's gonna be two terabytes, because right now I only have one, but then this popped up, 980 Pro. I think this thing has like 7,000 read or write, I wanna, I wanna say, God, why don't they list that on here? Anyways, doesn't matter, don't memorize the specs, but it's, it's faster and it's Samsung. Maybe it's faster, but it's Samsung. And then this is an active cooler, which I feel like maybe might just be crap, but you know, Whatever, it's got a little tiny fan in there. It's gonna give it just a 
a little bit of active cooling on my SSDs, especially because they're so fast right now. I really want to be able to make sure that they run at optimal speed. Um, and then I got this. This is a Crosshair 8 and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna rebuild my main computer, which means the reason why I've kind of delayed this is because I'm not taking a new case. I'm taking my old case with my old power supply and I'm taking all of that apart with the water cooling and everything. I have a new box full of water cooling supplies over there. I'm gonna use my uh, 3090 that I have in my mining rig, which I said this when I built that mining rig. I really want that 3090 in my workstation. I wanna be able to edit videos off that and use that for actual work production stuff. I was just temporarily running it as a mining rig just to try to get some of the money out of it, which has done really well for me so far. I've made money, but the point is, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna hook it up to a water block, I'm gonna run it through a custom loop, and it's gonna be awesome. It's just going to be a long project because of the complexities of taking down my main computer, getting everything switched over, getting everything booted up, reprogramming Windows, going through and setting up all the programs and the settings and all the little customizations, you know, the despyifying Windows 10 again and boxing the freaking uh, Candy Crusher installs and all that crap. Someone also didn't mention to me that uh, Crap Computing over there made a little thing about his, you know, custom install of Windows where he, he pre gets rid of all that crap. And I've been meaning to not watch that video. So I'm gonna have to get right on that. Uh, point is, I'm gonna tackle that this weekend because 4th of July is coming up, which means I get three days in a row off and that's gonna be awesome. So I can start sometime Saturday and then hopefully have it done by Monday. Probably be done Saturday night because I mean, once you take your main computer down, it's hard to sleep knowing that's not online. I just can't do it. 